Hi guys! Whoops! Hamza does it again. And again. In spite of all his careful self-assessment and self-praise, using attributes such as academic and intellectual, let's take a look anyway how shallow his intellectual level really is. I don't for one minute think or even dare to hope that this will do anything to make him think, reflect or ponder his attitude or in any way reassess his self-perception or self-esteem as he just soldiers on regardless of what reality is shouting at him. Now, first and foremost, I do not wish to positively engage with him. I will not use quotes showing what the opinions of others are, no matter how famous, but use my own words to make my own arguments. And the summary is, Hamza once again challenged an academic, this time a professor from Pakistan. He went into his usual routine, <laughs> but the professor is a professor and not a debater. So Professor Hoodboy, a physicist, did not play Hamza's game and Hamza threw a tantrum, which culminated in the professor leaving Hamza sitting there like a fool. Hamza, well, we know, simply copies Dr. Craig down to hand movements, which he must practice in front of a mirror, and even the quotes, which shows his lack of imagination and originality. I strongly doubt he has read more than the quotes and that he even understands what he's quoting there. This has been pointed out by Frank uh, Tipler and John uh, Barrow in their book, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle. They, they estimate the evolution of the, the human of the, genome, of the, are, of the, homo are, the odds of this the are somewhere between four for to the negative 180th power to the 110,000th power and four to the negative 360th power to the 110,000th power. So if evolution did occur, it would literally be a miracle. And there for evidence for the existence of God. I don't think that even today the professor knows the arrogant and dishonest tactics of our favorite Hamza, which mainly consists of making a claim, rattling off the names of other people and their opinions, and then arrogant mocking the opponent. And I only know of one single written debate with Hamza where he got so terribly beaten up it was actually it was so humiliating that I would never show my head again in public had this happened to me. Not so Hamza. He has an agenda and does not care what others think. The people who uploaded a video of the debate between Hamza and Professor Hoodboy have decided that criticism is not an option and censorship is so much more comfortable. And because they have their fingers in their ears and their heads either up where the sun don't shine or in the sand, they are ignoring the real world around them. They have painstakingly removed all comments and my response video. It seems they are now sending people over to the video with the interview with Professor Hoodboy to make stupid and unsubstantiated childish comments. <laughs> Don't they realize how others are laughing at them? Is this the best Islam can do to further the understanding of this already deemed controversial system and religion? send children to make really stupid and wild comments in an English void of all grammatical rules and conventions, showing the hatred for the unbelievers and anyone who thinks differently than they do. Now, I just want to show why Professor Hoodboy was so frustrated, even before Hamza gave him attributes and calling him things which are completely and totally unwarranted. And just for the record, I would have walked out long before the professor did. Hamza expects Professor Hoodboy to react to his taunts. He so masterfully copies from Dr. Craig, but then it could be sheer coincidence that both use incredibly similar wording for their arguments. Hamza expects Professor Hoodboy to react to the claims he made regarding the divine origins of the Quran. The topic is religion and rationality. Hamza brings up a book as evidence, the Islamic Quran. Hamza is being paid to analyze the creation and evolution of this book. How can he expect a counter argument for something he brought up and of which the professor has no knowledge? How can he expect this? Professor Hoodboy is a physicist and not someone governed and driven by the superstitions and idiosyncrasies of this old book. How can Hamza even expect a retort to his inane claim about the book? 
Now, remember that Professor Hoodboy, unlike Hamza Tsotsis, is not paid to debate or look for arguments regarding Islam and the Quran. The professor simply shakes his head and says he does not accept any faith-based claims. What part of N-O, no, does Hamza not understand? He loves using big and long words without really understanding them. He loves throwing out sound bites which he thinks make him look suave and knowledgeable. I wonder whether he stands in front of a mirror and practices poses and acts like a James Bond. Hamza compares himself to academics and intellectuals and yet he has nothing in common with them. Hamza just uses quotes to make his points and then leans back and says, it wasn't me who said that. What is uncanny and quite eerie is listening to five minutes of William Lane Craig and then switching to a Hamza debate. <laughs> Amazing. Now, I, I wish Hamza would explain and explain a bit slower what exactly the epistemological thesis of reality is or the Islamic philosophical position he mentions so frequently. This epistemological thesis of reality is not the only thesis. And I would love to know whether every book that uses language outside the established literary form is automatically of divine origins. What Hamza refuses to understand is that there is no proof for the existence of any of the gods. So how can a god which was never proven to exist be the creator of anything? How can a god existing outside our own space and time create anything tangible for us? and state that there is an object which exists and the only reason it exists is because an invisible creator created it. A creator which is outside our space and time dimensions which requires to be worshipped by us. Specifying all sorts of things but not the essentials about that worship like when and where and how. Now I offer an easier to believe and more plausible explanation. Humans did it. The arguments Hamza loves using, developed during the Middle Ages, show some good arguments for the existence of a god, and, but they were not geared to find out or establish whether any of the gods existed or not. God's existence was a given, based on faith. The faith that this god then magically turned out to be the own favorite and chosen one. Uh, chosen through rational thinking, of course. These arguments were there to reinforce the faith, not generate it. I have pointed out all of these things to Hamza several times without any success. Hamza just marches on, undeterred by reality and logics, twisting reality into what he perceives as being right. Let's, 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 let's follow the Quranic paradigm of that's not what I said. Well, I quoted you here, you could address it later, it's up to you. So we have a very arrogant Hamza who thinks of himself as an educated international speaker, someone who has read extensively and in reality has only read some pages on the internet and in his function as well-paid head researcher of IERA. This boosts his self-esteem to the extent that Hamza tells a biology professor that he is wrong about the professor's understanding of biology. He now tells a professor of physics he is wrong about the professor's understanding of physics and promptly gets his ass handed to him on a silver platter. Does he learn? Not a chance. He seems to think that putting the word philosophical in front of a stupid statement automatically upgrades or even validates it. He said previously that the Quran validates the expanding universe without any proof, evidence or even explanation. So where's the science in this? According to cosmologists, the universe is expanding and the Quran substantiates this claim. Yet he accuses others of something he calls scientism. I presume it's supposed to sound derogatory and menacing. He says scientism is the belief that science is the only way to form conclusions about reality. Does he offer an alternative? No. <laughs> that would be too difficult. Hamza calls this a metaphysical assumption without explaining or defining metaphysical. Maybe because he doesn't know himself? Nowadays he shies away from direct claims taken verbose from the Quran and instead just waffles. The harsh punishment such as cutting the hand of the thief, which I will not condemn because this is part of 
what I believe in my own legal framework, something that I believe is divinely given as a Muslim. Because he is afraid of being nailed down, he avoids any precise statements or direct quotes from the Quran other than general jibber jabber. Hamza is a professional researcher. He gets paid to learn and present his arguments. He receives money to convince others that his God is real. And regularly, he and his arguments get destroyed, owned, annihilated, and blown to smithereens. And then he comes back for more by repeating the same old points that have been shown to be wrong several times. Is this one of the characteristics of a brainwashed and totally deluded human being? And this is just one example of his blundering incompetence. If you don't understand, ask. If you don't know what I said, say Hamza. No. Hamza you, better you. explain it to me. But hang on. After we explain no, it to no, you, no, no, no. don't now start guessing why. If you don't know the argument, say, I want to engage with you, teach me the argument. But Voltaire said that, look, it all had to come from somewhere. Somebody had to make it, just as you say. And yet Voltaire was a rationalist. Uh, just a correction, it wasn't Voltaire, it was William Paley. It was Voltaire. And then he says Paley. And then, no, it's not. What is the reaction? Does he apologize? Does he ask? Does he assume he knows something better than the professor? Doesn't he remember what he said just a few minutes ago himself? Even the editors of this video <laughs> realized that Samza had blundered on this one as well. So they put up an explanation, uh, which is also faulty and wrong, because the professor was not referring to finding a watch and wandering about the watchmakers, but that one can't conclude any ontological details from finding anything or any timepiece. And this was taken from Voltaire, who argued this in his treatise on metaphysics in 1736. And as long as 2000 years ago, people have been using this argument, where even Cicero in De Natura Deorum, 2000 years ago, mind you, in 45 BCE, argues that perceived order points to a designer. <laughs> but it's still not true. Um, it's only that the most well known of these teleological arguments is the one postulated by William Paley in his Natural Theology. Today it's replaced by a mobile phone on a beach, and all of these have been solidly destroyed, debunked, refuted, demystified, and killed. But Hamza calls Professor Hoodboy shallow, not using his mind, void of critical thinking, and even threatens him with his repeated question, How dare you? What an imbecile. You have no basis for your moral grounding. And all because a normal person does not blindly subscribe to myths and superstitions and lives in the reality of the 21st century, where morality is what is acceptable by a fluctuating consistency in society and not dictated by an old, unchanging book. Sure, democracy is not perfect, but it's the best thing we have at the moment. Hamza thinks that politics and the current non-Islamic governments are the cause for greed and each and every crime. On his Facebook page, he openly states what the downfall of Greece is, according to his puny brain. Capitalism. He also says that all Muslims are... Pe oh, yes, yes, no. It is essential to understand what role Western foreign policy has... Been. Oh, my goodness. Now, d does this mean... Kuwait was so aggressive towards Iraq that Saddam Hussein was actually forced to retaliate and invade Kuwait? Who the foof does this primitive and simple-minded buffoon think he is? Did the professor insult Hamza for his belief? No. It would be very easy indeed to accuse Hamza of hating non-Islamic politics, governments and democracy, as he constantly blames any kind of shortcoming on these. He does not explicitly say this, but I could certainly make a case given his statements in the past. But then Hamza does not understand concepts and clings to single words, as I have shown before. If um, anyone paraphrases what he said, he will say, no, that's not what I said. Ah, it's so frustrating to have to keep the shortfalls of your opponent in mind when making a point. At some stage, he has to realize that he does have people capable of using both brain cells in his audience. 
What is strange is that Hamza himself wrote just days after the debate that towards the end of the discussion he walked out of the lecture theatre, most probably due to the fact that he had no substance and was exposed for his irrational and fallacious thinking. But only a few weeks later, his attitude has changed to Professor Pervez Hoodboy is a liar. I am sure... <laughs> <laughs> he says he has produced a video that is full of lies. No, I have produced a video. And it's not full of lies, because if it were, I mean, surely Hamza would just show one single example. Or is that... No, he can't, because he cannot quote anybody else to make that point for him. That's why he probably doesn't make an example. <laughs> so, there's no proof. It's just a claim, as per usual, without any kind of justification. And what shocks me even more, over 250 people actively clicked on the button to confirm they liked this. <laughs> who are these people? And Hamza is the one who uses words like intellectual honesty. Does he even know what that is? And to show how ridiculously simple-minded Hamza is, here he is in a debate which consists of Two opening statements, two rebuttals, comments, and then a Q&A. A formalized and well-known debate, which Amza has, as seasoned international public speaker, encountered before. Or maybe not. Did Hamza respond to the professor's arguments in his opening statement? No, how could he? He did not know what the professor would say, did he? So, if he could not respond to the professor's points, why is he surprised that the professor did not respond to his and is disappointed. How could the professor know in advance what Hamza was going to say? First of all, I was slightly disappointed because I think the professor didn't really actively listen to what I was talking about. No, why did I use science to justify the Quran in any shape or form? I heard you talk about M theory. I heard you talking about gravity. I heard you talking about Stephen Hawking. These are probably things that uh, you don't do for a living, but. Uh, I do something pretty close to that. Yeah. What you have insisted upon is somehow bringing science into this, using words like the data and cosmology show. Well, my dear chap, if I was to ask you to write down Einstein's equation for the expanding universe, I bet you wouldn't be able to do it. Would you? You could try me. Well, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he managed to do both, respond to Hamza and bring his own point across. But Hamza doesn't realize this. He uses teleological and ontological arguments. The professor uses scientific and rational arguments. Why does Hamza think the opponent needs to follow his arguments? The professor responded to them by calling them faith-based and unacceptable for him. Quite rightly so. The professor asked, if there was any proof. Did Hamza provide any? No. Professor Hoodboy even stated, why don't you stay with your religion and I with my science? Now that is wisdom. Did Hamza respond with any arguments addressing the points the professor made? No. Mr. High and Mighty doesn't seem to have to. He just quotes scientists and <laughs> when asked to provide a single formula of those and by those scientists, um, yes. I think the professor should have been a little bit more attentive to what I was saying, so it would be more fruitful to the discussion. Well, again, not attentive to the discussion. But Hamza whines like a kid who can't get his sweeties while mummy is waiting at the cashier. Hamza wants a frank discussion. And who decides what is considered a frank discussion? Well, Hamza, of course. And a frank discussion is this is that I said that the Qur'an allows you to use various methodologies to come to conclusions about things. Hamza does not even avoid misogynistic comments. What's your name? Maryam. You see, even Maryam knows, and she's not even a professor. What a chauvinist pig! <laughs> all in all, this was by far the weakest performance of Hamza sources. Why? Well, I think it was because the opponent, Professor Hoodboy, never let Hamza play his rehearsed game and could never really bring across his rhetoric. As we can see in the video, only the most primitive and weakest of the weak will succumb to Hamza's baiting. The woman at the end who thinks she has all the answers even categorically contradicts Hamza with her assertions that Earth is egg-shaped and the Big Bang is accurately described in the Quran. Does he jump up and correct her? 
No, he applauds. In, in the Quran, it was mentioned 1400 years ago that the earth actually is uh, in the shape of an ostrich egg. Initially, we now even science believes that. What a hypocritical douchebag. I think it's time to deny Hamza Andreas Stortzes a platform for his inane and demeaning rhetoric. Agreeing to debates with him gives the impression that there is something worth debating with him. There is not. Thank you for your time.